I like watching people work. I like watching them do things that I could never do, like an office job. One market survey puts the number of Americans who sit down all day for work at 86%. They work on black nondescript chairs, between blue-gray cubicle walls, and next to gunmetal cabinets, the stuff of Dilbert cartoons. But here at 1031 Broadway and 125 Broadway, Manans, New York, there's no people to watch. All that's left is the stuff. The office we know so well has been around since the 70s, when the pointy-haired bosses of the world began to pack as many workers as they could into as little space as possible. Since Herman Miller pioneered the cubicle, the office furniture business has exploded into what is now a $14.31 billion industry in the U.S. alone. The panel construction hasn't changed much other than in the late 70s. It was solid pine, uh, and today it's a, it's a composite uh, wafer board type material. That's Derek Bird, National Sales Manager for Davies Office. What's Davies Office? Here's somebody trading in their old panel system. And again, these are tall. There's 67 inch high panels. Most everybody now wants 54, 48 or lower. Essentially, they take old office furniture and make it new. Davies is an interesting company, not just because their whole business model is based on remanufacturing existing capital. They also have left their mark on these two former printing presses in Manans. typically take an old car and trade it in on a new car and get some value for it. Yeah. That doesn't happen in this business. Everything gets thrown away. When big businesses fail, or when a boss just wants a fresh look for their office, Davies offers their refurbishing services. Panels, is panels the majority of what you guys work on? You it, say? it is. It's, that's what built the wall system in the office. It's not just big banks that don't know what to do with all their excess furniture. Davies has had to store stuff in some creative ways, too. But they don't talk about that anymore, according to Bill Davies, vice president. Luckily, a lawsuit from a few years ago can shed some light on what happened. Davies rented thousands of square feet of space from an elusive real estate manager named Michael O'Brien. I find vacant buildings are used for a whole range of things that they were probably never intended to be used for. Um, in the case of Mr. O'Brien and the Argus building, I, I truly don't know what kind of plants he has. He keeps saying he's using it as a warehouse. That's Kara Macri. I'm the Director of Preservation Services at Historic Albany. Kara's job is to advocate for the old buildings of the Albany region, so she knows Mr. O'Brien. He does own a number of properties, and uh, he, he's not exceptionally responsive. Through limited liability companies, or LLCs, O'Brien sued Davies in May 2015. He claimed that they had stopped paying him for storage. Davies' counterargument was simple. 
look at the state of these buildings. You did not hold up your end of the deal when you let them deteriorate. The documents from the court case describe fallen overhead HVAC units, mold-like substances, green moss, vegetation, dripping water. Indeed, the buildings had a seedy past. At the Williams Press Building, Michael O'Brien had been nagged by various local authorities for years. He even had a judgment against him that Williams was a site of toxic chemical dumping into the Hudson. The case stalled. There was never really any contract between Davies and O'Brien. It was what they call an oral lease. Michael O'Brien admitted at a deposition that he and Bill had struck the deal because Davies and I considered ourselves good friends, so at times we were sensitive to what made sense for both parties. In February 2017, the two lawyers must have struck a deal. With a couple strokes of the pen, the feud was over. It's like a little burb of Albany, I guess. You know, I mean, it's a little, it's not so much the street, you know, like the neighborhoods in Albany, it's a little laid back. Yeah. People get property. It's not, I mean, it's better than Albany, I would think. Yeah, they shut it down. The press shut down, and it's been uh, vacant ever since. And they spent a couple of years pulling truckloads and truckloads of furniture and office equipment out of there. And, I think there's still a lot left in there. The building we've been talking about, the Argus Press building, uh, was constructed in 1915. So you had all these wharf warehouses for the lumber barons and then later on other industries. So they would take their ships up here, unload everything in the warehouses and then disseminate it throughout uh, all of New York and west down the Erie Canal. It was really kind of this almost like a meeting place. It was that hub where things came, stopped, and then they went further on. Albany has always been that kind of crossroads. So everything that people trade in uh, for credit ends up for some period of time stored in this warehouse back here. This stuff is waiting to be remanufactured to some other color spec. Wow. And oh there's my about 200,000 square feet of space back here. shipping giant U-Haul has big plans for the Williams Press building. Owner representative Russell Dumas, who didn't want to be on camera, said they will use the almost 300,000 square feet of space to house self-storage units. I asked him what would happen to the thousands of pieces of office equipment. His response? That's for the lawyers to figure out. But until the lawyers figure something out, it appears that the stuff of white collar jobs will sit idle here in the shipping capital of the Northeast.